Hello, everyone, and good afternoon. Um, I'm here to tell you about how I headed modularity in a React Native library and maintain. Uh, here is the Expansify QR code if you have any question for later. Screenshot, screenshot. Uh, but first, let me introduce myself. I'm Matthew, also known as Zuntech. Uh, I work in a company called Swan. We provide a GraphQL API as a service with, uh, for banking as a service. Um, it uh, allows you to create uh, account, cards, payment, etc. Uh, I'm also a podcast host at Putain de Code. And last but not least, I'm the maintainer of React Native Permission, localized Bootsplash, bars, etc., etc. A quick word about Bootsplash. Uh, there's a new version with brand image and dark mode support. For this feature, you need a license key. So here's a 30% discount code. Uh, I will put that in Expensify if you need to. Uh, but let's get back to our subject. I hesitated for a long time to call this talk uh, working around platform constraint while maintaining a good developer experience because that's basically its content. Um, because I'm going to talk about the journey I took while maintaining React Native Permission. Uh, if you are not familiar with the library, it provides a simple API for requesting device permission from your React Native code. Uh, it's used in production by huge company, uh, for example, the PlayStation app, uh, Microsoft Edge, uh, the Tesla app, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, but just before we start, with a quick show of hands, who is using React Native Permission in this room? Okay, that's that's quite a lot. <laughs> no pressure, no pressure. Uh, let's start the story. Um, first, I'm not the creator of React Native Permission. Uh, it's Yona. Uh, in 2016, Yona created this library. He maintained it for three years, and for which I like to thank him a lot. So you can applaud a bit. Yeah, I will. I will send him the video. He will be happy. Um, to understand what the library does, I have to give you a small overview of all permission work on the device. Uh, your app requests access to a set of feature or data from the operating system, such as user location, for example. Then the system asks the user for approval, and the user either grants it or not. Then the system forwards the response user to your app. This is what it looks like. Uh, the little alert you see uh, is not handled by our app or by the library, but by the operating system. That's why you can customize it. Uh, on this screenshot, it's iOS, but other platforms have a very similar system. And in this flow, uh, this is where React Native Permission operates. Uh, it allows you to check and request permission statuses directly from your React code. And currently, the library is able to communicate with iOS, Android, and Windows. But let's address the elephant in the room. Um, Companies are often eager for the maximum of data. Uh, let's grab everything we can, just in case, you know. And the results were terrible, <laughs> especially in terms of security concerns. Of course, Team Apple was not very happy about it. And very quickly, uh, they began to check that the application submitted to the App Store uh, were indeed using the requested permission for user-facing feature. If it was not the case, Apple had no problem rejecting your application. And folks, this was the main flow of a library. Because on iOS, you need to describe first why the permission is required and to actually use it. And as the library contained code capable of requesting a certain amount of permission, it was necessary to define all these usage description properties even if you don't need some of them. And during an App Store review, the code of your application is analyzed, and if somewhere in your application code it's possible for you to request a permission, you will have to provide a usage description. Which means that using like the first version of a library, reviewer will convince that you are using all the permission that can be requested by the library. <laughs> and there was no real escape. 
if you didn't define a usage description, boom, app reject. And if you did, the, the reviewer could observe that everything is set to request this permission, but you appear not to do it. Why? App rejected. And of course, the inevitable happened. Multiple issue with lots of comments about application denied from a store. And trust me, this was not even the worst uh, thing you can imagine right now. Uh, because let's imagine a scenario where you want to publish a new application on the App Store. Of course. One week later, Apple is not really agreeing. <laughs> you answer immediately. Uh, please, I use uh, React Native Permission. Uh, it's a library. Uh, fine, thank you. Ah, finally, whew, uh, a small hiccup. Okay, uh, your application is finally ready to be distributed to your user. But oops, you made a little mistake. And you need to explain yourself again, because reviewers just follow script, you know. Uh, sometimes you are lucky, often you are not. Um, so by using this version of a library, you were stressed every time your app was published. So user came with their own solution. And the most popular one, and frankly, the best one at this time, was to fork the library to remove uh, unwanted permission code. Of course, you had to maintain this fork. It was not what we can call peak user, no, peak developer experience. And people were using that solution quite a lot. <laughs> so this wasn't a library anymore. This was a boilerplate. <laughs> and I was at this time like many users, frustrated by this situation of getting my app rejected. Um, I was too lazy to fork, so I reply with a shitty comment um, in this exact uh, same issue. And lesson learned. <laughs> After that, people continue to report the issue, but were redirect to this one because there wasn't much else to do. So this was our challenge. How do we only embed uh, the needed permission code in our app. And what unlocked this situation has been React Native 060 uh, being around the corner with the integration of CocoaPod by default. Uh, it was a huge deal as fully embracing CocoaPod allows us to solve our issue. Okay then, are we writing a modular React Native library? Um, from the first discussion about CocoaPod integration, I started working on a new module version that will use a feature of this package manager uh, called subspec, uh, which are like model inside model. And this was exactly what was needed. By default, you link all source files living at iOS uh, directory root. Then we declare subspec, aka submodule, that link extra source files, one per permission. But then, even after, uh, even before uh, the first release candidate, a new feature appeared, autolinking. Uh, autolinking is actually amazing. Uh, it removes the need to define your React Native dependency inside your post file. But yeah, uh, as a run permission and other module, well, not autolinked by the React Native CLI, you couldn't redeclare it by yourself in your pod file, or it will result in a duplicate symbol error, as the library will be linked twice, one automatically and one manually. So we can't use subspec. So let's try a different approach. Instead of using one pod specification for the whole module with multiple subspec in it, let's use one pod spec per permission. Each of us pod spec declare which source file it will link. In the end, the module core, which contained no permission-related code, was autolinked. And to add permission-related code, you had to declare which permission you want to link using classic dependency declaration in your pod file. 
on the code side, uh, the model declared a common interface with two methods, check and request with resolver, and each permission implements it. Then, to detect permission presence, we are using a C special operator, as include, as it's handled by the compiler. If the header file doesn't exist, uh, here it's uh, rn permission camera dot h, this piece of code uh, don't end in your application code. Then we have a huge sweet cage to determine which handler you want to instantiate using exactly the same trick. And once you get your permission under instance, you can call, check, or request with Resolver. Sorry. And now everything is perfect, right? No. Um, a lot of users start in reporting this error. Uh, maybe some of you know it. Uh, even if they follow the documentation and added the wanted permission in the pod file, so they follow the readme, but this error appears. And by a lot of users, I mean lots. And the reason was not so simple. Uh, let's imagine we have this situation. Two dependencies are installed, so the core, RN permission, and permission camera. Uh, RN permission check for permission camera header file presence, so I check for the .h file. Uh, so here it exists, no issue. Uh, but then we add a new permission. Uh, the microphone one. We run pod install. Cool, it appears. Uh, this means that the module core should be able to check uh, uh, if the microphone the file is present. No, uh, it cannot do that because Xcode didn't rebuild the errand permission dependency as it didn't change. Uh, so here, it doesn't detect our new uh, microphone permission. Sometimes it didn't detect any permission uh, showing the red log box error you, you saw earlier. And to fix that, we have a great solution uh, used by any uh, React Native developer. It, <laughs> uh, it's to clear entirely the Xcode cache. Um, but there is another issue. Uh, so here's the default uh, configuration. We are using static libraries. Uh, which is the default option in CocoaPod, so everything is performing okay. But let me introduce this bad boy. Um, for those who don't know uh, this function, use framework, tell CocoaPod uh, you want to use, well, use framework uh, instead of static library. Uh, it offers a lot of advantages, but also a few disadvantages, and especially a, a huge one for us because all our dependencies are compiled into dot .framework file, kind of black boxes, our module cannot check for other presence files anymore. We found uh, an ugly rock around, a piece of code to put in your pod file to force React Native permission and permission to be compiled as static library. Uh, rich result in this static library for React Native permission stuff, uh, dynamic framework for the rest. So the issue was solved, but with all of that, uh, this the caching issue, uh, the developer experience was far from perfect again. All of this issue would have been avoided uh, if we were able to use subspec as initially planned, um, because the permission related code would have been leaked as part of React Native permission model, not as external model. Was this ID completely dead? Is, is it really impossible to achieve? Um, introducing the React Native CLI plugin. Um, what does it do? Uh, first, you declare what permission you want to use inside your project package.json. Then you run the plugin command and it will simply locate the source file line in the module pod spec and replace it to include core and all the wanted permission source file. It's simple as that, but we had to think of it. And now everything is perfect, right? Not really again. Uh, by design, 
as you have to run the command each time you delete your non-model directory. Uh, override the pod spec will be resetted to the default one. And if you run pod install missing this step, then it will remove every permission related code. But developer experience. <laughs> There was also issue with monorepos uh, and dependency hosting because it cannot locate properly your packages and file. And again, we found a solution. Um, but for that, we need to add a new language to the mix, um, and it's Ruby. Uh, so let's convert the CLI plugin from just Ruby uh, to run it before pod install because it's the only language understood by Cocoa um, for information, I didn't call in Ruby since eight years, I think. It was Ruby on Rye, uh, so yeah, quite rusty. And I did the logical thing. Um, <laughs> I went to ChatGPT and just asked, hey, I have this JavaScript code, can you convert it to Ruby? And now, uh, as my talk mentioned AI, it's no cooler, I think. Um, and it works quite well, actually. <laughs> so how are we using it? Uh, you load this new script in your pod file, uh, raising the not require logic, which land in the latest React Native version. Then we call a setup permission uh, function, which will update the library pod spec exactly like the CLI plugin did. But this time, there's no need to run it each time you delete your non-model directory, and it's also solve our hosting issue. So I hope everything is perfect now. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, nothing is really over. Uh, maybe tomorrow some user uh, might find something irritating and open an issue. Uh, but that's why yeah, we are here, I think. Um, let's do a quick conclusion. <laughs> um, don't be like all me. Uh, you may sometimes be frustrated uh, as an open source user, uh, but keep in mind that open source is hard. It's a human effort uh, for free most of the time. So be empathetic. Even better, um, if you can rejoin uh, project maintenance, even if it's like a few things, documentation, uh, handling issue, it's always great. Um, you will discover the other side of all of this. Um, also, nothing will be perfect on first try, especially when you have to combine different technology, uh, different platforms, uh, like in React Native. And um, often it takes time to find a good solution. But uh, as you get to know your subject better, you will turn uh, towards the best. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, that's all for me.